Thank you for watching the August 2020 edition of the AJP Heart and Circulatory Physiology video table of contents or from the editor's desk. The journal staff understand the difficult time many of you may have had over the last six months, and we continue to offer our help in an effort to streamline the publication process. So please contact us if you have any questions or need help with your submission or in the post-submission process. Now let's take a look at what's inside the August issue. In a recent call for papers, Kunovac et al. review the biochemical changes in the cardiovascular system following particle inhalation exposure and to highlight potential biomarkers that exist across multiple exposure paradigms. They integrate these molecular signatures in an effort to provide direction for future investigations. This review also characterizes how molecular responses are modified in at-risk populations, specifically the impact of environmental exposure during critical windows of development. In both direct and indirect, such as this gestational exposures, connecting the biochemical mechanisms with functional deficits outlines pathways that can be targeted for future therapeutic intervention. Wong et al. investigated the effect of race and subclinical elevations in blood pressure, prehypertension, on cutaneous sensory nerve-mediated and nitric oxide-dependent vasodilation. They recruited participants who self-identified as either non-Hispanic black or non-Hispanic white. Within each group, participants were subdivided as either normotensive or prehypertensive. Skin blood flow was assessed via laser Doppler flowometry and underwent local heating. Sensory nerve-mediated cutaneous vasodilation was reduced in prehypertensive non-Hispanic white and non-Hispanic black groups relative to the normotensive non-Hispanic whites. Nitric oxide-dependent vasodilation was also reduced in prehypertensive non-Hispanic white and non-Hispanic black groups relative to the normotensive non-Hispanic whites. These data suggest subclinical increases in blood pressure adversely affect sensory-mediated and NO-dependent vasodilation in both non-Hispanic blacks and whites. Robinson and co-workers studied the functional consequences of mutations in cardiac troponin T, R131W, cardiac troponin 1, K36Q, and alpha tropomyosin, E40K, using adenovirally transduced isolated guinea pig left ventricular cardiomyocytes. They found significantly reduced fractional shortening with reduced systolic calcium. They observed increased sarcoendoplasmic reticulum load and smaller fractional SR calcium release, which corresponded to a reduction in SR calcium ATPase activity and increase in sodium calcium exchanger activity. The disequilibrium of calcium handling promotes dephosphorylation and nuclear translocation of nuclear factor of activated T cells, or NFAT, with concordant RAC alpha serine threonine protein kinase, AKT, phosphorylation, but no change to extracellular regulated kinase activation in chronically paced cardiomyocytes expressing dilated cardiomyocyte myopathy mutations. These data suggest more complex intracellular signaling underpinning dilated cardiomyopathy driven by the primary mutation. Brian et al tested the hypothesis that a myocardial-specific profile of secreted factors is produced in response to pressure overload. Levels of 44 factors implicated in immune cell recruitment and function were assessed in a murine model of cardiac hypertrophy and compared to levels produced in a model of pulmonary fibrosis. Of the 44 factors assessed, 13 proteins were elevated at one week after pressure overload, whereas 18 proteins were found increased in the fibrotic lung. Eight of those increased at one week after pressure overloaded were not found to be increased in fibrotic lungs. Additionally, six factors were increased in plasma of one week overloaded models in the absence of increases in myocardial levels. In contrast, in mice with pulmonary fibrosis, no factors were found increased in plasma that were not elevated in lung tissue. The authors conclude that pressure overload myocardium generates a unique signature of cytokine expression versus the fibrotic lung. In an innovative methodology paper, Alexeyev et al. report the generation of a Cree recombinates iCree transgenic rat, where iCree is driven using a vascular endothelial cat cadherin CDH5 promoter. 
The CDH5 promoter was cloned from rat pulmonary microvascular endothelial cells and demonstrated 60% similarity to the murine counterpart. Crossing the CDH5 iCRE rat with a TD tomato reporter rat resulted in progeny displaying endothelium restricted fluorescence. TD tomato fluorescence was prominent in major arteries and veins and it was similar in males and females. Quantitative analysis of the carotid artery and the jugular vein revealed that on average more than 50% of the vascular surface area exhibited strong fluorescence. TD tomato fluorescence was observed in the circulations of every tissue tested. The microcirculation in all tissues tested displayed homogeneous fluorescence. Thus, the endothelial restricted transgenic rat offers a novel platform to test endothelial microheterogeneity within all vascular segments, and it provides exceptional resolution of endothelium within organ microcirculation for application to translational disease models. Thanks for watching. I want to make you aware of two new calls for papers. The first is a cross journal call, the first of its kind, on deconstructing organs, single cell analysis, decellularized organs, organoids, and organ on a chip model. The second is a call for papers on racial differences in cardiovascular and cerebrovascular physiology. Those of you doing human cardiovascular research, please pay close attention to this new call. In the meantime, please listen to our new pad podcasts. I think you'll find them informative and entertaining. We'll see you next month, and please take care of yourself.